Hello, this is Yin Hong Liu. I'm working with Dr. Stan as a postdoc. Today we're going to talk about one experiment with the title Retention and Digestibility of Zinc, Copper, Manganese, and Iron in Peaks Fat Diets Containing Inorganic or Organic Microminerals. First, I will start brief introduction some microminerals, and then we will go to the objective of this experiment and showing the material and methods and then we will move to the results and discussion, and finally I will give some conclusions about this experiment. Microminerals such as zinc, copper, and manganese are very important for growth, reproduction, and immune system because they are the required cofactor for several hundred enzymes, and they are involved in the structure of various transcription factors and other proteins. Therefore, provide enough amounts of microminerals to animals is crucial for their growth and health. But the supplementation of microminerals often exceeds the requirements, which result in relatively high level of microminerals excretion from animals. Two main categories of microminerals, inorganic and organic microminerals. Inorganic microminerals are normally inorganic salts, such as mineral sulfate, oxide, and others. Organic microminerals are the mineral binding to the organic ligands. Many factors affect the digestibility and absorption of microminerals, such as the low pH in the stomach and duodenum, which may induce dissociation of microminerals salts and results in the loss of microminerals to the antagonists. The fatic acid in the diets can form a stable and highly insoluble complex with inorganic salts and reduce the mineral absorption. Antagonism among minerals, such as the high level of molybdenum and selenium, can interfere with copper absorption. And last one is the high-fiber diets. The high-fiber diet may increase the endogenous losses and then decrease the digestibility of microminerals. A potential advantage of organic microminerals is that the binding of organic ligands to the mineral should provide the stability of the complex in the upper GI tract, minimizing the mineral losses to the antagonists and allow the complex to be delivered to the absorptive epithelium of the small intestine for mineral uptake. Use of organic microminerals instead of inorganic microminerals may reduce the excretion of minerals from animals. Therefore, the objective of this experiment was to determine the apparent total tract digestibility and the retention rate of zinc, copper, manganese, and iron in pigs fed either in organic or organic microminerals. A total of 32 barrels with initial body weight 38 kg were used in this experiment. They were randomly allotted to four dietary treatments with 2 by 2 factorial arrangement, so there were eight replicates per treatment. The first two factors were two different diets, semi-synthetic diets, and consorbimil diets. The second factor were two different sources of microminerals, inorganic microminerals versus organic microminerals. This table is showing two different types of diets, semi-synthetic diets and consorbimil diets. From here we can say the semi-synthetic diets contain 65% corn grades, 10% soil protein, and 20% sorghum, but the corn soybean diet contains 75% corn and 22% soybean meal. So compared with semi-synthetic diet, corn soybean diet contains relatively higher crude fiber and fatic acid. The inorganic microminerals were sulfate salts for zinc, copper, manganese, and iron. The organic salts of zinc, copper, and manganese were the chelate of one mineral and two hydroxyl for methylcyl botanic acid and the organic source of iron was the chelate of one iron and one glycine. This figure in the right corner showed one example of organic zinc. Before starting the experiment, there were two week depletion period. All pigs in this period were housed in individual pens and fed the semi-synthetic diet without supplementation of any of these four microminerals. After that, all pigs were transferred to metabolism cages and housed there for 14 days. Pigs were fed experimental diets for 5 days as adaptation, and the urine and fecal samples were collected 5 to 7 days based on marker-to-marker approach. The apparent total tract digestibility and the retention rate of microminerals were calculated. 
Our data were analyzed by ProcMix or SARS with randomized complete block design. Model included type of diets, source of minerals, and their interaction as a fixed effect, and groups as a random effect. The p-value less than 0.05 were considered as significant. Now let's move to the results. So for all the figures in the results, the x-axis represents two different diets, semi-synthetic diets and consorbimule diets, and the yellow bar represents inorganic microminerals, and the red bar represents organic microminerals, and the y-axis was the ATTD, or the retention rate of the microminerals. So the first figure here, we can say the apparent total tract digestibility of zinc compared with the semi-synthetic diet, consorbimule diet had a relatively lower ATTD of zinc. So this result indicate the phytic acid or the relatively high fiber concentration in the consorbimule diet may have a negative effect on the ATTD of zinc. Compared with the inorganic microminerals, organic microminerals had greater ATTD of zinc so this result indicate supplementation of organic microminerals may increase the digestibility of these microminerals. No interaction were observed. This figure is showing the retention rate of zinc. From here we can say there is no diet effect for the retention rate of zinc. Compared with the inorganic microminerals, organic microminerals increase the retention rate of zinc. There was no interaction between type of diets and source of minerals. This figure is showing the apparent total tract digestibility of copper. So from here we can say no diet effect, but compared with inorganic microminerals, pigs fed organic microminerals had a relatively higher ATTD of copper, and there were significant interaction between type of diets and source of microminerals. So here we can say in the semi-synthetic diet, no difference between inorganic and organic microminerals, but in the consorbimule diets, compared with inorganic microminerals, organic microminerals increased ATTD of copper. So this result indicates the low pH in the upper GI tract may have a relatively lower effect on the ATTD of copper, but the phytic acid in the consorbimule diet may have a negative effect on the digestibility of copper. This figure shows the retention rate of copper, similar as the apparent total tract digestibility of copper, no diet effect, compared with inorganic microminerals, organic microminerals increase the retention rate of copper, and there is significant interaction between type of diets and source of minerals, similar as the ATTD of copper. In semi-synthetic diet, no difference between the inorganic and organic microminerals, but in consorbimule diet, Compared with inorganic microminerals, organic microminerals increase the retention rate of copper. This figure shows the apparent total tract digestibility of manganese, no diet effect, similar as the copper, and compared with inorganic microminerals, organic microminerals increase the ATTT of manganese. There were the tendency of uh, interaction between the type of diets and the source of minerals, similar as the copper in the semi synthetic diet. No difference between inorganic and organic microminerals, but in the consorbimule diet, compared with the inorganic microminerals, organic microminerals increase the ATTD of manganese. This figure is showing the retention rate of manganese, similar as the ATTD of manganese, no diet effect, but compared with the inorganic microminerals, pigs fed the organic microminerals had a greater retention of the manganese and there is a significant interaction between the diets and source of microminerals. In semi-synthetic diet, there is no difference between inorganic and organic microminerals, but in consorbimule diet, compared with inorganic microminerals, organic microminerals increase the retention of manganese. This figure is showing the ATTD or N. There is no diet effect, but compared with inorganic microminerals, organic microminerals increased the ATTD or N, and there was significant interaction between type of diets and source of minerals. In semi-synthetic diets, no difference between inorganic and organic microminerals, but in consorbimule diet, compared with inorganic microminerals, organic microminerals increased the ATTD or N.
this figure is showing the retention rate of iron, no diet effect, similar as the ATTD of iron, compared with the inorganic microminerals, organic microminerals increase the retention rate of iron. There are significant interactions between type of diets and source of minerals. In semi-synthetic diets, no difference between inorganic and organic microminerals, but in corn diets, organic microminerals had greater retention rate of iron than the inorganic microminerals. The last figure showed the ATTD of phosphorus. From this figure, we can see, compared with semi-synthetic diet, corn diet had lower ATTD of phosphorus. This is reasonable because the phytic acid in the corn diet may have negative effect on the digestibility of phosphorus. Compared in inorganic microminerals, organic microminerals increase the digestibility of phosphorus. So this result indicates Supplementation of organic microminerals also increased the digestibility of phosphorus, but there was no interaction observed here. So based on these results, we conclude organic forms of microminerals have improved digestibility and retention rates compared with the inorganic forms. Supplementation of organic microminerals also increased the digestibility of phosphorus. Inclusion of organic microminerals in high fatty diets may be more beneficial than in low fatty diets. With that, we'd like to thank Novos for the financial support and also thanks for listening to this podcast. If you want to know more information about our research, please go to the website nutrition.isi.illinois.edu.